Ursula vs. Menshikov just occurred, and now it's time for me to break down everything that just happened. First off, there was a heavyweight kickboxing fight between Rade Opacic and Guto Nasante. Rade got revenge here, very impressive performance. He was able to hurt Guto multiple times and drop him in the first round. Guto was able to get his bearing in the second round and hurt Rade with some with a left hook. However, it was too late. He gassed out, and by the third, he was basically just clinching. Very impressive by Rade. Definitely deserves a title shot off of this. I heard that they were going to go to thinking about Croatia a few months back before Soldage got knocked out. So maybe they're maybe reconsidering it. But if they are going back, have Rade fight Roman quickly for the inaugural heavyweight kickboxing title. I know Rade is Serbian. However, it is a similar fan base in the Balkans. Good for Rade. Then there was a flyweight contest between Hu Young and Wu Sung Hoon. Very close contest. Hu Young dropped Hoon in the first round and it looked like he might be to get the finish. Hoon rebounded very well, took his back, almost got the rear naked choke in in the second round. And then the two just went to war on the feet. Boxing combinations for days. Hoon was able to nix in the kicks a few more times with utilizing some nice leg kicks and kicks to the body. Close fight. I might have leaned Hoon, but just off of the kicks and seemed like he was landing a little bit more efficiently. Young was getting a little reckless there at the end, but I am not complaining about the decision. It was very close. As for what next for Young, I believe they, hate, they should have him fight Danny King at next. There's a storyline there as Young beat Jay Hay, another team like Kai Guy. So maybe Young can try and get revenge there. Maybe do that October or November in a title eliminator so King Ad can get on a win streak. King Ad's probably going to win that. Martin Mushaletto beat Amber Kishin in a pretty decisive decision here. Amber did a lot better than I anticipated. She gave Martini a lot of problems in the boxing combinations that hurt her a couple times. But Martini was able to use her distance and keep a solid boxing combinations throughout to win a pretty decisive decision here. As for who Martine should fight next, give her another woman who can't make weight. How about Jackie Buintan? That's a pretty good title eliminator, assuming one of them actually makes weight. Have it be in the Philippines, maybe around like October or November-ish, and then have Barlow fight for the title shot in September on the same card that Haggerty will be defending his title. Quan Wanil beat Archon Balak in an absolute banger. I'm not going to lie, I was worried for Quan at the, in the, at the beginning of the fight because Balak was able to take him down and get his back, and he did not do very well there against Shokasato, but he showed his development. He was very patient and resilient there, waited to get into a good position, and he, he was able to get out. And on the feet, he started piecing up Artem. Artem did have some some solid combination work on the feet and just like, some good jabs and was able to cut up Quan a little bit. But Quan was able to use that little shuttle hook to the body and finish him eventually. And when he dropped him with that jab, like Artem was trying to get back up and Quan nailed him with a brutal knee to the head. Absolutely incredible. And Quan got the finish. Two finishes in a row for him and he got a performance bonus. Good for him. He said he wanted a title shot next, but I don't really want that because Andrade and Loman have not yet been booked. So at the earliest, it's going to be October or November, I assume, which means we won't see Quan fight again until April or May. And I don't think that's right to waste a year of this man in his prime. Have him fight John Lineker in a title eliminator. That's a really good fight. Both of those guys are really great on the feet and it'll be explosive. They were supposed to fight a year back, but it never occurred. So that's what should be next as a great title eliminator. Ariane Sadikovic was able to take out Nikki Holskin via a decision. It was a competitive fight between the two of them. Nikki Holskin was landing a little cleaner, he, but you could definitely tell his age. Also mixed with the fact that Sadikovic was constantly marching him down. The two of them were trading well on the feet. It was a close fight, but Sadikovic was able to edge out a decision win here. Sadikovic is in a weird position because the lightweight kickboxing division is very slim and there's really nobody else coming off of a bunch of wins as Rosu got booked for next month. So I would say Sadikovic maybe have him fight a Tutu or an Islam or Shazayev in October or something as a form of title eliminator for himself. Mansur Malachiev was able to submit Jeremy Miyato in a very impressive performance in the first round. He struggled a little bit to keep him down and take him down in the first round few minutes of it, but once he did, he was able to sink in a, a Darce choke very easily. Impressive performance here by Mansur. Definitely deserves a title shot, man. Just give him one. The Strong Division needs someone to definitively fight for the title against Jared Brooks. It's been long enough. I book it for like maybe September or October because Mansur did not take any damage. Superbone knocked Teifu Nazkin out cold. This is one of Superbone's best performances to date. Ozkin really didn't have a whole lot for him. He was pushing the pressure a little bit, but he wasn't able to do much with his boxing combinations. Superbone was just laying it on him with leg kicks, body kicks, 
and it just didn't seem like it was going to be a pretty decisive decision until Ozkin missed a right hook and then Superboy was able to counter with a left counter kick and knocked him out cold. Just dev devastating knockout, very brutal. Ozkin had to get stretchers out of there. Insane performance by Superbone. I'm glad to see him back in such an incredible capacity. You kind of have to give him a title shot after that. Works very well for Gory and wins because then you get an instant trilogy out of that, which will be interesting to look for. Even if Alizov wins, just, just after of a performance like that, you got to do a trilogy. In what's an early contender for round of the year, Ilya Framanov and Shinye went to war. Framanov started out by using kicks to the body and to the legs very well, but then Shinye caught him with a left hook that dropped him, and it looked like we might be seeing one of the biggest upsets in one history. Framanov was able to compose himself, almost get into a arm bar, but was able to get up, up to his feet and then connect with knees to the clinch that was able to drop Shinye. He was able to scramble well, take his back, and then sink in a rear naked choke to get the win there. All that happened within about three minutes. Insane fight. I love the performance by Framanoff. As for what should happen to him next, give him Yun Chin Min. Minton just beat Kirill Gorobets a couple months back, who is another member of Tiger Muay Thai. So Framanoff has the opportunity to avenge the loss for a teammate. Should be an interesting one. Have it be in October or, or November. Cade Ruccello and Tommy Laniker had their match very closely contested. Tommy Laniker was able to get a submission attempt early on and get a catch. So Cade was on the back foot from right from the get-go. They were trading locks throughout it. It was a pretty fast-paced encounter. Very close on the cards. Cade, at the end of the day, was able to get the decision. I'm not sure if I agree with that. I thought Tommy was consistently getting closer to getting submissions and getting more consistent submission attempts. However, it is what it is. Cade got the decision win there. As for what's next for him, definitely go into MMA probably. I don't really think there's anyone else for him to fight in submission grappling. And he's been looking to make his debut. So if they're going back to the States this year in November or December, have his debut be there. Or if he's feeling really ambitious, have his debut be in August against a tomato can. So it gets a good start. Finally, in the main event, Ursul ran through Menshikov in under 60 seconds. They started out jostling on the feet. Got a, both of them landed a few strikes, but then Ursula clipped him with a left hook on the forehead and that knocked out Menshikov for good. This is definitely Ursula's best performance, man. Menshikov was an absolute killer, and Ursula ran through him in less than 60 seconds. And right now, man, you guys can start to consider him to be one of the greatest combat sports athletes of all time. To go on a 22-fight win streak, fighting all the killers in the world, being undefeated in one, and now being a dominant champion in two different sports, absolutely insane. One of the best athletes to ever compete in one. One of the best athletes in kickboxing in Muay Thai period. Tonight he continued his dominance. Long live the king, Rehi and Ursul. As for what's next, he wanted to go back into kickboxing. I think that's a good idea. Give him a little bit of a break because he did have a quick turnaround after that since much flight. Konstantin Rozu was taking on a Bulgarian fighter in July and give the winner of that a kickboxing title shot. Do it in October or November. And with that, guys, those are all my opinions about One Fight Night 11. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Comment your own thoughts about the event. This is Shower TV Productions, and I'm out.